Hello there, train fans. T-Bone here at T-Bone's Trains, continuing on the journey from my 1964 Mark's train set oval to some new O-Gauge fun. And today, I want to show you how to make a replacement spring for a Mark's tilting coupler. Let's switch to live at the workbench narration. So, until you've had a coupler spring either come apart or pop out or whatever, and until you've had a problem, I'll bet most train fans have not really explored how the Marx tilt coupler works. Well, right under here, let's see if we can get right in there. Right under there, see that shiny little silver spring in there? It's really just like a hairpin. Let's see if we can have a little more light. And right there at the top, it's bent over as it comes through the part of the coupler. And here's what one looks like off the coupler. Now I have it wrapped around a nail and taped to this board. The bottom little dent has a little well that it sits in and then the top goes through the hole. Some are bent over, sometimes, sometimes not. And today I'm gonna to show you how I have successfully made my own spring copies to repair broken couplers. So besides my handy dandy spring copying jig, now you might wanna make this on a little, this is just a piece of quarter inch birch plywood. You might wanna put it on a little bigger piece of wood, like a, a one by two um, that you can clamp. But so far I've had good good use and good results uh, holding it in my hands. Besides that, a pair of needle nose pliers are handy and a pair of cutters. And then you need some spring wire. Now you can still find this Maybe in hardware stores, certainly online. This is a precision band, music wire, piano wire sometimes called. Um, point, there you can see right there, diameter point zero one four, or number five gauge. And I happen to have this left over from dad. I never saw him use it, but I couldn't just get rid of it. So I'm gonna cut off a, about a three inch piece. Get the other stuff out of the way. So the first thing I do is try and copy the little hump at the bottom down there. So I'm gonna make a U bend. That's fine wire, it's hard to, I'm not happy with that. I'm gonna cut it off and start again. I am wearing safety glasses in case any of that stuff wants to go flying when I nip, cut it with the nippy cutters. Okay, I'm gonna start the bend, I'm gonna get on the tip so I can make a nice hook. There we go. There's my hook. I'm going to grab it on the other side. And, got it. and now I'm just going to bend it back, trying to keep it at 90 degrees. There we go. There's my hook. Now the good news is, it doesn't have to be an exact perfect copy in every detail to work. I've The ones I've made that I've been happy with, have all worked and, and none have failed. Um, now that I have that hook, as you can see, let me zoom in a little bit, there we go. As you can see, my, my hook is hard to twist <laughs> in your hand, but my hook is pretty close. The main thing is that this bottom of the hump is small enough right here small enough, tight enough, that it'll, it'll go into the well. Now, all I gotta do is hold that on top of the original hook and bend it around. So my length is now matching. Didn't have to measure other than holding it up to there and get pretty close. So now I can, now that I have the angle in there, I can 
hold up the pliers and tighten that up a little more. Now I'm doing it with my fingers. Okay. Now you don't want to make that V too small because that's your springiness that's going to make it work. Next step, back on the on the V, and I'm going to pinch outside this time and pinch. So now I just need to bend that 90 degrees or so up and away. Now I've got a little twist in mine. So let me see if I can straighten that out. There we go. So, again, not a, complete, not a perfect machine copy, but close enough that it will, it is going to work. And let's see if I'll show you putting it onto a coupler. So, the spring on the right, I just pulled off that Allstate caboose. The one on the left is one I just bent up, and as you can see, pretty reasonable facsimile. So, let's take a look at how... And here is one other secret device. It's a piece of 1 8 inch brass square stock. Got it at the local hardware store at the, the Hobby Metals. You know, it was in a package, something like this. That's the flat stock, but that kind of package, I think it was less than two bucks for the, for the foot long piece. And here's what I'm going to do. Take the spring, insert the hinge end into the square tube. So I've loaded the spring into the square tube and it actually goes to the corners. There they are. Let's focus. Actually goes to the corners and that's what kind of holds them in place. So my first step will be to get the tall top straight piece in its little hole. There we go. Once it's through there, I'll start to pull back and the spring will start to expand until it drops in a spot. And now we have a working tilting coupler. Okay, train friends, I've got a deal for you. For the month of March 2020, if you will subscribe to T-Bone's Trains, then send me your name and address at tbonebush at yahoo.com. I'll send you two feet of that spring wire that I used in today's video. Free. No tricks, no gimmicks, just one train guy helping out other train folk. Let me know how it goes. Let's keep these March trains humming down the rails, hmm? Thanks for watching, and let's have fun with trains.